Welcome back. Now, for the last one month, lawyer Dunstan Omari has pitched camp in the coastal town of Malindi, Kilifi County, to represent his client, televangelist Ezekiel Odero, who is being investigated over links to the Shakahola massacre. An advocate of the High Court, Omari set tongues wagging when, at the height of the investigations into the shocking massacre, offered his services to the televangelist, adding swell to the notoriety of his briefs. From paupers to billionaires, from evangelists to the top political figures, Omari has virtually represented every card of the society in his legal practice. He shares his journey with our reporter Stephanie Wangari and why the mocking reference of himself as Shakahola lawyer does not move him. We have now started the battle after we have finished releasing Ezekiel. Now on Monday, we are in the High Court to battle three issues. When Dunstan Omari made a post on Facebook saying he was headed to Shakahole to represent televangelist Ezekiel Odero, many people, including his own family, thought he had gone crazy. At the time I was taking a flight to, to Mombasa and I posted on Facebook that I'm going now, the team has come to fight for Pastor Ezekiel. Not even my family wanted to see me. Everybody believed Omari has gone nuts. Pastor Ezekiel Odero's case is just one among many controversial cases that Omari has taken up in recent years. He now cuts the figure of an omnipresent, highly sought-after lawyer. From one case to another, meme lords have had field days on social media each time he wears his advocate wig. Stubborn. We have not slept. Resilient. We have been here for the last seven days. And loud. On all arguments the state wanted to bring. He believes that every human being deserves a right of representation no matter the offense at hand. For Dunstan Omari, life begins at 40 is not just a phrase, it is a lived actuality. From being a secondary school teacher to a child officer and studying law at the age of 40, this is the story of Dunstan Omari. <laughs> We are headed to a private members club in Nairobi where Omari takes time to unwind. It is a public holiday and today no prominent persons have been arrested. From time to time, however, Omari receives calls from his clients who need representation. 58-year-old Omari was born to his late parents, Elkana Mogaka and Milka Kamunto in Nyabite, Nyamira County, in a family of 12 children. Omari says he was not always a bright student and had to repeat classes to attain grades that could take him to university. From downwards, I was a bit more active in extracurricular activities and I digressed a lot of my energy to other matters. So the first time when I went to Ruiru Form 1, Form 4, it was really you attending class. And one of the guys I was in school with at Ruiru is uh, the former governor of uh, Kiambu, Waititu, Ferdinand Waititu. We were together in Form 1. So I didn't do very well. I got a division uh, free. Then I had to go back from free again at Kiabajori Secondary School to get the momentum. And I got a momentum of a division two. That now allowed me to move to, uh, to high school. Yeah. So, and, and I've, I've always found out that uh, later when I went to, to study law or to study education, very bright students do not succeed in life. Middle level students are marathon runners. They are able to circumvent, to beat the odds and reach the top. I've grown with time. I've assimilated it slowly with time. And wherever I am now, I'm still learning and I'm still acquiring more skills. At Kenyatta University, he obtained a Bachelor of Education and went on to become a secondary school teacher, specializing in the English and Swahili subjects. But after 15 years in the profession, he felt it was time to do something different. Hence, he enrolled as a child officer and at the same time began studying law. Then I decided to do law at 41. 
So when I did my LLB at the University of Nairobi, I graduated in 2008 with a bachelor's degree in law. Then in 2009, I went to the School of Law for the postgraduate diploma in law. At the same time, I enrolled for a master's degree at the University of Nairobi. Concurrently, I did the master's program and I also did the, uh, the postgraduate diploma at uh, the School of Law. I graduated. I was admitted as an advocate in, uh, on the 4th of November 2011. Omari describes the hectic journey to finally achieving his dream of becoming a lawyer. Every day I could leave Nairobi, drive to Kerugoya, a distance of around 140 kilometers to one back, then come to classes because the classes were in the evening, so I could do that, those classes. I finished those classes when I went to the school of law. Classes were in the afternoon, so I could leave in the morning all the way to Kerugoya, do work as a children, a district children officer. By two, by around noon, I've left there, drive back to Karen, the School of Laws in Karen. So it was quite a very hard. His colleagues at the children office came to know him as the advocate who was well versed with the law and especially on children matters. His popularity stuck, and one day, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, the fifth president, Dr. William Ruto, was my client. That is, I reached the apex in the children's court by representing Dr. William Ruto in the Abbey case. I was his advocate and he was my client. Then slowly I represented also in the children's court uh, the former CJ, Justice David Maraga, retired Chief Justice. The number of cabinet ministers, the number of top executives that I've represented in the children's court are numerous. Omari would go on to become a constant figure in high-profile cases and notoriously featured in numerous legal brawls, pitting various clients, including the brawls between outgoing Director of Public Prosecutions, Nurdin Haji, and former DCI boss, George Kinoti. High-profile clients don't get problems during the day. So I had to modify to be available for them as and when they called. Two, the many matters that you deal, they will want somebody very strong. I always laugh at the memes I see around here. People are saying, oh, Omar is sleeping with his, with the briefcase and uh, shoes all over. Omar is doing this. It, it, it's simply telling people that practice has changed. Away from his career, Omari is a husband and a father of two. He is in his 34th year of marriage. Tell us about your family. Is your family okay with you uh, representing all these cases? My wife decided to marry a person who metamorphoses like a butterfly. She has learned to cope that I am that person. I've also learned to cope that she is that person. Because the, the biggest philosophy of life is that uh, for those ones who will stay in marriage, they must agree to be fools. I'm a fool to her. She has also got to be a fool to me to allow me to pursue the interest. The wing I run for divorce, I'll tell you, for example, during COVID, we were divorcing at least 25 people per week. Because why? They could not be able to provide food. Marriage is about food. Marriage is about taking people to hospital. Marriage is about providing school fees. My two young men have understood that. Otherwise, they would not have gone to the schools they have gone to. Otherwise, they would not have gotten the lifestyle that they are going to. So this notion of people talking about family, 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 the root to family and stability of a family is provision. He is unapologetic about the cases he represents, saying this is how he provides for his family. The keyboard warriors called uh, Facebook and social media do not pay school fees for my children. They do not bring food on the table. People are busy talking. People are busy making noise. The question you need to ask 
uh, those guys is one. The oath we took is to represent anybody who has an issue with the law. The public, one thing that is there is that the public normally is emotional. When it is their relative or when it is them who have that challenge, then that is when the services look for you. I'll give you an example. At one time uh, in 2013, I was representing uh, some murder suspects. A lady found me at Milimande and told me, you'll never go to heaven. How can you represent a murder suspect? 2016, the same lady was in a club and somebody was shot in that club. They were arrested and they were arraigned in court as suspects for murder. The first person she called is me and said, forget about what I told you. Now, it's now when I need the services of a lawyer. Most of the people, the, pub the public think they are guilty. There's no evidence in court. Sometimes the state can create a narrative and the public borrows that narrative. But when you reach in court, the evidence must be produced and most of the evidence is awkward and that's why very many of those people are acquitted. So you have told us that you have reached the peak and that this is the time to exit the stage. Why is this? It is very interesting to always change careers. The marketplace is changing every other time. I think by next year or the other year, I'll be thinking on how I'll down tools from practice and enter into other fields. I think I've not reached the apex of my ambition. At 59 years of age, Omari believes he is still young to pursue a career in any other field that he chooses. Even now, I decided to go to study pathology. Now that uh, Shakaola, there is a new profession that has come out. There is only one pathologist in this country called Johannes Odor. He's parting short. Let everybody know you are not destined for one closet. You can move. You can change career, you can change potential, and you'll still succeed. What is more constant is that you believe in yourself. Stephanie Wangari, KTN News. Kenya's Sarah Aching.